Okay, so day one, we are in Harajuku. You might be wondering, why, why, why Harajuku on the first day? Uh, it's because. It's because uh, we want to get dripped out. If you didn't know, Harajuku is the fashion district of Tokyo. Even without all the streetwear stuff, you can still find a store here that matches your style. If you just like to wear jerseys, or if you like wearing vintage stuff, there's definitely a store here where you can get something you like. Even if you don't care about clothing, my tip is still to think a little bit about Japanese denim. We don't really have to get into it, but if you're the type who likes to use their souvenirs, and you don't want to be basic and get a kitchen knife, it's probably one of the most unique options you've got. For me, I found my denim piece that same night in Ginza in a store called Capital. A jacket like this is extremely hard to come by. Also, if you like Uniqlo, then you should walk your Airism t-shirts to Giyu. Gu? Giyu? I don't know. It's Uniqlo's sister brand, but I'm vibing with how loose their stuff looks, and it's actually kinda cheap. If I knew about this beforehand, I would've used my money up better. For dinner, we had tempura nearby at this spot. Even for something we randomly chose, it ended up being the best tempura I've ever had. Just because there was this sweet glaze sitting in the batter that I've never had before. My friends know me for being the foodie, so the fact I'm casually blown away on day one is crazy. Day two, we sent it straight to Osaka. Osaka? Okay, I'ma stop. We bought a JR pass online to take the bullet train. And pro tip for rides on the Shinkansen, you wanna have your hotel send your heavier luggage down to your next hotel. It costs like $20 for each bag and for that price, you won't have to get tired dragging your heavy luggage around. So yeah, if you don't want to be walking around like how these people are, it's worth it. Also fun fact you've probably already heard a million times, if you book your spot on seat E on the train, you'll be seated by the window that shows Mount Fuji on the way. Which would've worked for me if it wasn't foggy the whole time. So we made it to Osaka and it was a- Oh my god, I'm sweaty as hell. Okay, never mind. Yeah, it was a mission to get here. Never mind. Okay, so I'm giving up on narrating to the camera because I'm a clown. All I wanted to say was we finally made it to Osaka, checked into our hotel, and now we're at this hidden all-you-can-eat wagyu shabu shabu and sushi spot. This was Will's first time having umi, and you can tell the man was so emotional because of how different it hit. The highlight for me was 100% the sukiyaki. It feels like it melts in your mouth and the egg dip adds so much to it. Anyways, I highly recommend this if you can find it. We started day 3 off by going to Osaka Castle. There isn't much to say without making it sound like history class, but if you want to get good photos with it, you should go into this building up to this rooftop bar to get the best view. I couldn't go because someone decided to get married here that day for some reason, but here's some TikToks so you know what I'm talking about. Other than that, we walked around the castle a lot, you know, get our steps in, and we also visited a cafe there and had some drinks. After that, we went straight to Meta Sky, which is a tall, beautiful building with 140 floors. And there, we found out that I actually bought tickets to Haruka's 300, which is like 30 minutes away. Yup, my bad. So yeah, we gave in and took a taxi there, because sometimes I'm not about commuting. I just want to sit down all the way and get there quickly. But it was a good thing we did, because oh my god, this building was so much cooler than the first one. The elevator was better. The height was taller, the view was cooler, they even had food and it didn't even cost $10. And you can eat it while having that view? Underrated. Abeno Haruka's tallest building in Japan right now. See for yourself. Days 4 and 5 are pretty much gonna be lumped in together because they're both in Kyoto. First we spent time in Nanzenji Temple. We'll pick this place out because it was really calm and serene. Every building, hallway, and sidewalk we walked through just had this tranquil energy to it. But if I had to be real, the highlight for me, low-key, was this aqueduct. I don't know why, but it just looks so out of place. Like, instead of visiting feudal Japan, I was in the Roman Empire. I know we're supposed to be over that, but to me, it looked really cool. And I hear it looks even better with autumn colors. There was also this Zen garden, which is pretty well known. And it was actually pretty satisfying to look at, so if that's your vibe, then there's a lot of things to see here. You know that bamboo park in Arashiyama that everyone goes to at 5am just to avoid the crowd? I think it's overrated. We went to this place instead, it's called Kozanji Temple. It was 11am and I can still do my derpy little floss on this path and there were only like 4 other people there. So you might as well go here before it becomes way too popular. After getting some soft serve there, we took the bus to the Imperial Palace, which isn't underrated, but it's still worth visiting. You can tell these trees took decades to carefully shape out and there was a lot of them. Then we went to this knife shop because I wanted to grab myself a knife. I know I said 4 minutes ago this was basic, but this is one of the only shops that makes their own knives in-house, and this family business started off as katana blacksmiths since the 1300s. Of course I'm getting something from here. I guess I just have bad luck though because they were closed. 
for a while. Which wasn't a big deal because honestly we were ready to eat. A 10 minute walk away and we were at Nishiki Market. But I wasn't here just to eat anything, I wanted to eat here. A while back I saw this video where this guy said he thought the $9 skewers here were even better than a $200 Wagyu meal. With that hot of a take, I just had to see what he was talking about. Cheers. It looks like we overreacted for a second, but I'm not lying to you when I say that was hands down the best meat I've ever had. No way. I was not expecting that. No way. I was not expecting that. Even better than this, and everyone says this is great. Buy more. Buy more after. As soon as you feel it get chewier, you just bit all the way through the steak. It was that soft. And while you're taking all that in, you're also getting hit with the juices. $9, in case you forgot. It was so good we bought like 6 more skewers. The cashier was so confused. Again, best meat I've ever had. Shout out to this guy, he changed my life. Not too far away was Kyoto Pokemon Center and I went because people say this is one of the best you can visit in Japan and it was big. And I love Pokemon so I was happy. But anyways, since it's been almost a whole day, I go back to the knife shop. Remember that? And I still see that sign there. The sign said for a while, so I thought dude was having a lunch break. Like, that's a while. I don't know. Eventually, we just went back to Osaka. Maybe we can come back some other time. Reporting from the Shimanami Kaido, a 78 kilometer bike trail that spans across six islands from the Hiroshima prefecture to Ehime. We're just here because we want to really check out the area. We heard it's one of the most scenic bike rides in the world, if not the most scenic. And yeah, we just want to take you with us. So here we go. I just wanted to say, I think we're just a little over halfway. The trail's pretty easy. It would be pretty stupid for someone to fall. I don't know who, who would probably do that. Anyway, yeah, I fell. Bro, that's so unlucky. And the funny part is, I didn't even fall over because I was filming while biking. At one point, there were a lot of these spiders that have big ass bodies that weave big ass webs. One wrong turn, and I was gonna look like Bilbo from The Hobbit. So I basically did the next best thing and just crashed my bike into the curb. Obviously, I didn't really get to film it, so here's what it looked like. Yo, you good? Yo, yo, you good? Yo. So yeah, I just biked it off. No, I'm kidding. We went to this Lawson's here to take a break and clean up. Luckily, Will also found a medical supply store literally a block away, so he bought me some braces. Guess I picked a good spot to get injured. Eventually, we kept going. Sure, I was in pain, but it always could have been worse. At least it was in childbirth. And we only had one island left, so the only thing that can stop us now was Will re-aggravating his childhood knee injury. Wait, what? Sadly, Will wanted to take a ferry back because his knee was really bad. But it was late enough that the ports are just starting to close and Loki didn't look up where they were beforehand. So you probably thought this was an inspirational moment with friendship, but no. It's about manipulation and how I put aside my friend's health for my goals. Honestly, we both thought we went through too much shit to turn back and you can tell even with e-bikes my body was starting to give out. So it was gonna be a lot of pain before- Never mind, we did it. We fucking did- Yo, bro. Yo, we fucking did it, dog. Oh my god, we I'm did so dead. 78 kilometers later, I'm we fucking so dead. did it, alright? Okay, but we did go to Dotanboy River late at night and we had takoyaki at whatever was still open. So yeah, that's it. That's the video. I know I'm rushing, but I'm trying to keep it under 10 minutes. But if you did enjoy, remember, it's free to like and unsubscribe. Un